Hey guys, it's Kristen. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I just started my third year in a doctor of physical therapy program and the last year of my program is my clinical year. So I'm currently in my 12-week outpatient orthopedic rotation and today I decided to film a Q&A because I've been getting a lot of questions recently in the comments of my videos as well as in my Instagram DMs. So I thought I would sit down and answer them all in one place for you guys. Before we get into the video, I wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is TrueLearn. So I worked with TrueLearn previously here on my channel, and I absolutely love, love, love their website. If you don't know, TrueLearn is a website that has a bunch of smart bank questions for national exams in the healthcare field, such as the National Physical Therapy Exam, which you have to take after you finish your DPT degree in order to get your physical therapy license. So that is the main feature that I have been using on TrueLearn lately, but they also offer a bunch of other prep for words exams, such as those for PA school, nursing school, pharmacy school, or if you are becoming a medical assistant. My favorite feature on TrueLearn is definitely their custom quizzes because you can select content areas that you are weaker in and specifically practice those areas. As you take the quiz questions, TrueLearn identifies which questions you are missing and then uses spaced repetition learning techniques in order to push out content that is best suited for you. Thank you so much again to TrueLearn for sponsoring today's video. You guys should totally check out their website and you can click the link in my description box down below and use my discount code, which I will put on the screen here to get 20% off your TrueLearn subscription. So without further ado, let's get into the Q&A part of the video. So I have my phone here and I compiled the questions that were asked. So the first one is, can you please compare your experience of didactic classwork versus clinical work and which is more stressful? So I feel like if you asked like a bunch of PT students this question, everyone would answer it differently. For me personally, the didactic, which means like classroom, if you didn't know, the like first two years of my program essentially portion to me was a lot lot more stressful just because school stresses me out I put a lot of pressure on myself to do super well which is not a good thing it's something that I'm working on and definitely have gotten better at but I just feel like I was always stressed always studying always had something to be doing and if I was like spending time with friends or family I would feel like I should be studying if that makes sense so it just kind of was like a never-ending cycle of stress which was not the greatest and now that I'm here for my first full-time 12-week clinical that is like the only class I'm in per se so I just go to that full-time about 45 hours a week and then when I'm off at 4 p.m. or 7 p.m. whatever time I finish that day my schedule is kind of staggered so some days I end earlier some days I end later but regardless when I'm off there's really not anything I have to do I don't have to study for an exam the next day or something like that. I can fully enjoy my weekends, which is awesome. So personally, I like clinical a lot, lot more. And it is kind of stressful in the way where you're having to perform skills on patients for the first time. In my first week, I was like stressed out and nervous, but now that I've gotten into the flow of things, I've gotten used to doing things on real patients, I've formed a relationship with the patients at my clinic, I'm not nervous or stressed at all being there anymore, and it's just like very, very fun, honestly. So personally, I like clinical a lot, lot better, but that answer could vary depending on who you ask. Oh, and I did mean to say this. I'm going to answer all the questions like specifically related to my clinical at the beginning and then get into kind of the miscellaneous questions at the end. So that's how I'm structuring this video. But the next question is, where are your next two clinicals? So if you didn't know, right now I'm in my first outpatient orthopedic rotation and that is in Pennsylvania where my family lives. If you didn't know, my school is in Georgia. So I moved out of my apartment in Georgia that I lived in for the past two years during the didactic portion of my program, moved out of there, moved home for this 12-week rotation, then I actually have to go back to Georgia, but it's just for my second 12-week rotation, and that is in acute care, which is in the hospital setting, treating patients that are in the hospital, obviously, so going in and out of their rooms and working with them. For that, I will be back here in Pennsylvania again for my last and final rotation, which is in outpatient pelvic floor physical therapy, which I am so, 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 so excited about. It's something that kind of fell into place sort of last minute. 
If you watch my vlogs, I previously talked about how I wanted to be in Atlanta for my last year rotations, but this opportunity kind of presented itself, and I got the opportunity to have my last clinical at a clinic, again, in Pennsylvania, which is where I want to live when I graduate closer to my family. So I'm so excited that I was able to get my, like, kind of specialty one back here because that's really good for, like, job-related reasons. The next question is, do you have extra work to do outside of clinicals? Yes and no. We do have to track the patients we work with. So basically, any patient you treated that day that you did more than half of the work patient you can track. So I go onto this little website and type in all the patients that I did more than half the work with, um, which basically means I did at least half of the treatment session or I did the whole treatment session and my CI was just occasionally stepping in to help, that sort of thing. I have to enter those patients into a little portal. It doesn't take that long at all. And then every two weeks, my school makes us submit like goals for the next two weeks of the rotation just to make sure we're staying on track. And then at the midterm and the final of the clinical, we have to submit some more like reflection type stuff. It is the midterm now, so I just had to do a bunch of that. But overall, it's not much work at all. In the fall, for my second rotation, we will also have a research course on top of that rotation. And I'm not entirely sure how that class works. From what I understand, it's just a lot of like independent work and like recorded lecture sort of thing. Because at the end of next semester, we have to complete a big like 30 minute case report research type presentation. So I think that class is pretty much just working on that one project. The next question is, what are your favorite shoes to wear to clinical? So I have three answers. Number one, Rothy's. I think those are the most comfortable shoes for being kind of like nicer, fancier. So if I'm wearing like kind of a dressier sort of outfit that day, I will wear my Rothy's. They are pretty com comfortable. They don't hurt my feet while I'm working, but I find by the end of the day when I'm like taking my shoes off, they're just a little bit sore. So I try not to wear those every single day, just like once or twice a week type of thing. For my comfy shoes, I recommend Cloves and my Hoka's. Um, Cloves are specifically designed for people that work in healthcare and stand for long periods of times. And I have gotten so many compliments from the patients on them. Almost every single time I wear them, someone's asking me what type of shoes they are. And me and my clinical instructor just like laugh because we're like, you are the millionth person to ask where I've gotten these shoes from. Um, and then obviously Hoka's are just running shoes. Everyone knows of them. Mine are gray and orange, which my school color is also orange, so I only wear those when I'm wearing this like very specific Mercer University quarter zip, but those are really comfy too. Someone else asked, how do I decide between physical therapy and occupational therapy? Honestly, I wish I looked into occupational therapy more because there are a ton of similarities. Honestly, the biggest difference to me personally is um, occupational therapy is a master, so it's only two years, and physical therapy is a DPT, so three years. So it is obviously cheaper to become an OT schooling-wise because it's a year less of schooling. PTs do make slightly more than OTs do, but it's not by a significant amount. You can Google the average salaries for your state, but it's really not too different between PTs and OTs. PTs have a lot more kind of autonomy, if you will. They can treat without a doctor's referral, whereas OTs cannot. OTs kind of focus on the more like functional things. My clinic I'm at right now has an OT and she treats the patients that are specifically struggling with like gait, aka walking, balance, um, that sort of stuff. Just more like functional, like trouble getting into the bathtub, trouble getting up the stairs, unable to go golfing, like more functional stuff, if you will. If you want to work in a setting like pediatrics or acute care, honestly, to me, I don't even really understand fully the difference between what PTs and OTs do in those settings because it is so, so, so similar. When I was in acute care for my short-term rotation, a lot of times the PTs and OTs would go in the rooms and treat together, and the OTs would do more functional stuff with the patients, like teaching them how to shower, how to dress, how to use the bathroom, whereas the physical therapist more so was focused on sitting them up, standing them up, maybe doing some sit to stands for strengthening. I don't know if I explained that the best, but you can Google more if you're interested. That is just my general understanding of the differences, and I definitely think you should consider occupational therapy as well, especially if you don't want to work in outpatient orthopedics and you kind of are thinking about going into one of the other areas of PT where OT is super similar. The next person said, 
tips and tricks for note taking in physical therapy school. The entire first year of PT school, I pretty much took notes on my iPad using the app Notability, just simply exporting the PowerPoints in there and writing with my Apple Pencil directly on the slides. That worked super, super well for me. Then in my second year, a lot of my classes were more like lab, so we were up and moving and working on each other. And for those classes, they didn't really want us to have laptops or iPads out. We weren't allowed to have them in the room with us because they didn't want them breaking. So for that class, I just had a giant binder. I would print out the PowerPoint slides and write on them with a pen. So a similar type of concept, if you will, still just writing on the slides. I find that way I can be more attentive in class and not be trying to type every single thing down or handwrite every single thing down. That worked really well for me personally, but just find out what works for you. Someone said, how do I succeed in physical therapy school? Honestly, everyone learns differently and you just need to figure out how you learn best. And if you made it into physical therapy school, you probably have a pretty good idea because that means you did super well in high school and in college. So don't try to change anything too drastically based on what people around you are doing. Buy a planner, know when everything's due, always be looking a week or two ahead, what's coming up, what you can be preparing for now if you have a little bit extra time to make your life easier down the road. For anatomy, time and repetition is everything. Do a little bit every single day. Break it up so it's not super overwhelming. I have tons of videos on my channel specifically, study tips, how I study for anatomy, that sort of thing, so you should check those out if you want to learn more. The one thing I will say, the big difference obviously, is the hands-on component, and it truly, truly does come with time. I'm still not totally comfortable with a lot of those skills, and that's what this whole last year of clinical is for, so have some grace with yourself when you're learning these techniques. They don't expect you to be perfect. Your professors are perfect because they have been working in this field for probably 20 or more years, and you are just learning these skills for the very first time and probably having a competency or a practical on them a few weeks later. So just try to practice as much as you possibly can, but don't put too much pressure on yourself. I feel like if I didn't know how to do a skill perfectly, I would be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm going to be a horrible PT, like this is horrible, and I just would get so worked up. But honestly, it's fine. You will have tons of opportunities to practice them and perfect them in the future during your clinical rotation. And lastly, someone said, how are you tested slash exam schedules in PT school? This is going to vary school to school. Some classes I had like just a midterm and a final. Some classes we had like four or five exams. Some we had quizzes. Some we did not have quizzes. Just it really depends on the class. And then you have some classes that have the lab component with practicals and some that don't. But overall, it's just super busy because I was always in like six or seven classes at a time. So there's always something coming up around the corner. So planning is everything. So I think those are all the questions I wanted to answer for you guys today. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed and found it helpful, please be sure to subscribe to my channel down below and leave any video requests as well. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.